Hello, I'm Dr. Undergrad. Today, along with the help of my new sidekick, we will present the nitrogen cycle. Allow me to introduce NK, a natural killer cell straight from my own immune system. Now let's start today off with a question. Let's say we plant two identical plants at the same time. They have the same light exposure and the same amount of water each day. The only difference among these plants is the type of water they will receive. Plant A will have purified bottled water. Plant B will have normal rainwater. Now after a few weeks, which one will grow larger than the other? Keep that question in mind for later on. Now on to today's topic. Cellular growth is dependent on amino acids. Cellular growth will increase if the amount of amino acids increase. Here are a few amino acids, methionine, alanine, and glycine. Besides carbon and oxygen, what element do they have in common? That's right, nitrogen. Nitrogen is an important element. Without it, amino acids cannot be synthesized. If there are no amino acids, cellular growth is not possible. Nitrogen is most abundant in the atmosphere. However, it's not biologically available to the organisms on the Earth. To make nitrogen biologically available, it must be fixated in either an ammonium ion or a nitrate. The fixating reactions are all part of the nitrogen cycle. First, we'll start off with atmospheric fixation, which has two kinds of fixation reactions. The first kind of reactions are the photoreactions. In the photoreactions, light instigates a reaction with nitric oxide and the ozone molecules. Hey, those guys down there? They said, uh, you're a pretty weak compound. What? I'm not weak. Talking trash, let's go. Bring it on! Incoming! Assume formations! Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> 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 When the reaction is complete, a nitric acid is formed and waits in the atmosphere until it rains. The second kind of reactions in atmospheric fixation are the lightning reactions. When lightning strikes, it causes water vapor molecules and nitrogen molecules to react. That's time. Let's get the stuff. Dudes, what are you doing? We saw some human named Bunny Frank. He got struck by lightning in his kite and nothing happened to him, so we're gonna trial him. Wait a minute, that wasn't Benny Frank. That was Ben Franklin. And he had a key tied to the end of his kite to take the lightning when it got struck. Oh! acid is formed, and waits in the atmosphere until it rains. Hello! I'm still out here since the last video! This is how you treat your models? You leave us out in the cold? Ah, now it's raining! Once on the earth, the hydrogen dehydrates off of the nitric acid. This changes nitric acid into nitrate. Now nitrate can undergo one out of a few events. It can be assimilated into the plant roots where it will change into an ammonium ion and then quickly convert it into an amino acid. If the nitrate is not assimilated, it can leach into the groundwater. or it can be immobilized by soil microbes. Congratulations, lads. You're now part of me lucky charms. There is one other event that the nitrate can undergo, but we'll talk about that later on. That was the atmospheric fixations. Now let's move on into industrial fixation. NK will show you the Haber-Bosch process, which will fixate nitrogen into the ammonium ion. First, 
NK will add nitrogen molecules into a specialized pressure tank set at 200 atmospheric pressure. He will then add a metal catalyst, like iron. Now NK needs to increase the heat to above 200 degrees Celsius. And he does that with a standard military grade flamethrower? For the love of Darwin, NK, where did you get that thing? Never mind. When this process is complete, ammonium ions are produced and used in fertilizers. The next kind of fixation is the bacterial fixations. The bacteria rhizobium can fixate nitrogen when it has infected the roots of a legume plant. A legume plant is a plant that cannot fixate nitrogen without the help of rhizobium. An example of the legume plants would be a soy plant or a bean plant. Rhizobium form nodules on the root hairs of the plant. They fixate nitrogen and give it to the plant. In return, the plant will give the bacteria nutrients. They form what is called a symbiotic relationship. Basically, they depend on each other. When the legume plant dies, the nitrogen that was fixated into the plant is released into the soil. There is another kind of bacteria that can fixate nitrogen. It is called free-living bacteria. Free-living bacteria, such as cyanobacteria, can take nitrogen and fixate it into the like nitrate, the ammonium ions can go through the same events the nitrate went through. It can be assimilated by the plant roots. However, the ammonium ion is very toxic, so to avoid a toxic effect, it will be immediately synthesized into amino acids. If the ammonium ion is not assimilated, it can leach to the ground or be mobilized by soil microbes. Not so fast there, boy. Now on to biological resist. fixation. My job so much Plants fun. are not the only organisms that depend on nitrogen. Animals depend on nitrogen for cellular growth as well. An animal will eat the model plant. What? What are you doing? You're a carnivore! <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. As the lion digests the plant, it will also digest the amino acids and nitrogen of the plant, adding it to his own system. <laughs> But what happens after digestion? That's right, excretion. Basically means he's gotta go poo. The waste that the lion excreted will be added to the soil. Guy, what are you gonna do with that? Due to some unfortunate event, the lion dies. Now the body of the lion and the waste he excreted earlier will be decomposed into basic organic matter. Bacteria living in the soil will make the ammonium ions from the organic matter. Now there's one more thing that the ammonium ion can undergo. The ammonium ion can be converted by soil microbes into a nitrite. That nitrite can undergo nitrification by bacteria and change into a nitrate. Remember earlier when I said that nitrate can undergo one more process? Well, this is it. Nitrate can go through denitrification. Bacteria will help release nitrogen from the nitrate and return it to the atmosphere, thus closing the cycle. Now, after reviewing the nitrogen cycle, have you come up with an answer to the question from earlier? Which plant will grow larger? Will it be plant A with purified water, or plant B with rainwater? The answer is plant B. Purified water might sound great, but it's processed. It has no nitric acid or any ammonium ions in it. Rainwater contains some nitric acid, which allows more biological nitrogen to the plant. 
That nitrogen will eventually become amino acids and increase cellular growth of the plant. That ends our show on the nitrogen cycle. Thanks for watching.